Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Russ King, and a, a big thank you to Steve and SoCal Edison and the, the training center out in Tulare for hosting this training. They, if you haven't seen their, their calendar of training, you really should check it out. It's very extensive. This class is um, residential 3D HVAC design, but we are using a special software. It's a new software called Quick Model, and it's a 3D software. So it does a really nice job as a training tool. You can also download the, uh, there's a 30 day free trial. If you go to quickmodel.com and download the 30 day free trial, uh, you can open it up and kind of have that on another screen and follow along as best you can. Um, the house that we're doing is gonna be really, really simple. So it is possible to follow along, but I found that, you know, when you're trying to keep up with somebody else, you tend to get lost trying to keep up and you don't do quite as good of a job learning the software. But as Steve mentioned, this will be recorded. So you can always watch it at a later time, the recorded version, and then that way you can pause it as you go and then you can catch up and do it, okay? So um, having this, these detailed instructions um, is, is just as good. And I really, really encourage you to download these when you start playing with the software because it literally is step-by-step -step instructions. It starts off with start the software and then it talks about you know putting your project name in and stuff like that. So this class that I'm teaching, I'm basically going to be following these step-by-step -step instructions, okay? And then also, just so you know, when you download this PDF file, there's actually two parts to it. The first part is the detailed instructions, and that's like five or six pages. And then at the end of that, there's the not-so-detailed instructions, and that's just uh, three pages, okay? And so they're both in the same file, and... Um, uh, you know, once you've done the software a few times and you don't need so much detail, then you can start referring to the less detailed instructions and just kind of use it as a, as a checklist as you go through the software, okay? All right, and then I have Connor here with me. Um, he's our programmer. He programmed the software, and um, he's going to be monitoring the chat. So I encourage you, if you have questions, we will try to stop every now and then and answer questions on the software as we go. Okay, all right, so um, real quick, a little bit about me. Um, I started doing residential HVAC design back in 1988, uh, before there were even computer programs to do manual J, S, and D calculations. Manual J was literally manual. You had to hand write it out on these worksheets, and um, it, was, it, was a, it was a handwritten worksheet, and you had to use a pencil, and if you messed up or if you wanted to change something and see how it affected your loads, you had to erase everything and start over again from scratch. So it was, it was, it was very involved. And then in the uh, mid nineties of the show, I think it was the first software came out that did manual J calculations. And that was right suite. And I used right suite for many, many years. Um, I, I ran two different mechanical engineering departments um, where we specialized in residential HVAC design, mostly for production homes. Um, uh, we did a lot of work in California, but about a third of our work was in the Las Vegas area. So we did a lot of design work in Las Vegas. And um, so that's where most of my experience is. Uh, as I was telling Steve earlier, uh, we do have some users of our software that are back east and in Florida, and they, you know, it's a whole different world down there when you have to deal with humidity. Um, they also design their ducts differently down there. They use a lot of sheet metal ducts. They have a lot of basements and things like that. And this, our software will do basement style uh, duct designs. And I'll, I'll show you some examples of that. But what we're gonna go through today is a really, really simple house. And we're gonna go nice and slow so you can follow along and focus on the process of designing an HVAC system rather than the details of how to run ducts through a house and stuff like that, okay? So what you're seeing right now, what you're looking at is our software. And what I actually did is I opened as a floor plan, I opened a screen snip of a PowerPoint presentation and that's this opening slide right here. Um, so let me go ahead and get back here. So when you open the software, this is basically what you see. And as you can tell, it's a, it's a 3D environment. It is written in a software platform called Unity which is a software platform that's used for a lot of very high-end video games. So if it looks like a video game, that's why. It's, it's, it's written in, in a software pla platform that's designed for video games. So there's sort of this, you know, this sort of 3D world with a horizon and a sky, and, and there's a sun up there behind you that casts shadows and stuff like that. So that's all kind of cool. 
Um, but the, the, the main thing about it is that it does, it does the 3D without having to know a CAD program. If you know how to use AutoCAD or Revit or SketchUp or any of those, you know that drawing a house in 3D is a lot of work. You, you're, you're drawing you know, all the walls and you're drawing everything. Well, the cool thing about Quick Model that you'll see is that you build a house out of blocks, okay? And that's what we're gonna be doing. So this class is intended to teach you about the HVAC design process, but we're also showing you this software because it's a great educational tool as well, okay? All right, so what you're looking at here is, is essentially a floor plan. Um, and let me go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump a little bit ahead in the step-by-step um, -step instructions and I'm gonna go ahead and import an actual floor plan so it doesn't look weird with this PowerPoint slide on the ground. Um, Steve, someone says they can't see the screen. So, okay. So hopefully what you guys are seeing is is a it's kind of a 3D image that's moving around and it's a it's a square that says quick model 3D HVAC design part one. So hopefully that's what everyone can see. And um, all right, so let me I'm going to go over here real quick. I'm going to import a floor plan. Okay. See if you can help them resolve it through the chat there. Well, I'm seeing everything fine here. Okay. Okay, so what I just did is I imported a floor plan of the really, really simple house that we're gonna be looking at, all right? So let me just kind of uh, explain the screen and what's going on in the screen here. So across the top, we have our tabs and we start with a project tab, library. We're in the floor plan tab now. We have something called field draw, rooms, windows, HVAC draw, roofs, uh, data tabs, friction rate, free draw, and then there's this orange button up here that says energy gauge loads, okay? So what we do is we build the house in 3D, and if you've ever done loads before or even energy modeling, you'll, you'll know that one of the most challenging tasks is to look at a floor plan like this and calculate the wall, the wall areas of this wall. Because in order to do load calculations, you have to know the area of the wall, the U factor of the wall, there's some math done that calculates and it comes out to be BTUs per hour passing through this wall. Well, when you have a 2D image like this, all you have is length, where maybe on this plan, maybe on another sheet, it's gonna tell you the height of that wall. And so you have to do the length times the height and all this other stuff to get the area. So there's a lot of math you kind of have to do on this side. Well, what I'm going to show you here in a second is by drawing these boxes, it actually does that math for you. And, um, and then once you build the house and you have all the areas, then Energy Gauge is an ACA approved software that's written by the Florida Solar Energy Center, which is a it's an offshoot, it's a research arm of the University of Central Florida. So there are some really smart people over there. They have a software program called Energy Gauge that was approved by ACCA, ACCA, to do manual J and manual D calculations. And we basically teamed up with them and Quick Model 3D is the user interface and it passes information um, to the Energy Gauge loads calculation that does the ACCA manual J loads and then that information comes back to Quick Model so that you can design the ducts, okay? That'll make a lot more sense when we actually start doing it, but I just wanna kind of explain what energy gauge is, all right? So we've got this floor plan here and you might be able to tell um, that it's not to scale yet, okay? Um, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, so as you click on each of these tabs across the top, you'll notice that there's some menus that change as I do that, okay? So I'm gonna go to the very first one here, project tab, and now I'm, I'm in the step-by-step -step instructions. And it says, in the project tab, enter your project name. So that just goes up here. So I'm just gonna call this SCE Training House. Okay, and there's a place to put the address. I'm just gonna type some stuff in here. And this is all just, um, generic information it just will show up on reports and things like that 
Okay. And then down here at the bottom, there's a, um, a little box that says condition floor plans area. And then it says from drawing and volume. And right now those two numbers say zero. Okay. So if I were to look on this floor plan that an architect gave me or someone gave me, what I would look for is what are they saying the, the floor, the square footage of this house is. All right. And I'll tell you, it's a 30 by 20 house. So it, so somewhere on the plans, it'll say this house is 600 square feet. So that's what we're going to type in there. 600 square feet. What are we expecting it to be? And then as we start building the house out of blocks, the software is going to start calculating the area of those blocks that we put on the floor plan. And it's going to put that number down here under floor under from drawing. And we'll be able to compare those two numbers to make sure we're at least kind of in the ballpark. Okay. Now they'll never be exactly the same. Sometimes the way architects count square footage is different than the way everyone else counts square footage. For energy loads, energy calculations and HVAC loads, we measure square footage to the exterior surface of the exterior wall, which means the thickness of the wall is included in the floor area of the house. Sometimes architects don't do that and sometimes architects don't count stairs twice and things like that. So um, you might get a slightly different number than they do, but it should be close. You know, it should be in the ballpark within, you know, 20 or 30 square feet or something like that. Okay, but this is just a nice way to kind of double check your work. If you build your house on here and your floor area comes out to be 2,000 square feet and the architect says it's only supposed to be 1,200, then something's wrong. Maybe you scaled your drawings wrong or something like that. Okay, so that's just a quick way to check. All right, um, let's see here. The next one says go to the libraries tab. So that's this one up here. Libraries, and it might be a little hard for you to read, but if you look up here, there's a whole bunch of uh, choices. We have window types, wall types, doors, floors, ceilings, rooms, roof, and ducts. So these are libraries of different types of assemblies so that you can um, have multiple wall types, you can have multiple ceiling types and things like that. And this is where they're created. There's a default list of types. So I'm gonna click on uh, wall types, okay? And this is the default list that comes with the software. And our choices are two by four R13, two by four R11, two by four R13 plus four, with, that's a plus four rigid insulation, two by six R19 and two by six R19 plus five. So those are very common wall types that you see a lot. Um, but you can add to these, um, you can modify these, you can export these, import them back into another file. Um, these are just the example ones that come with the software, okay? And so what you're going to do is you're going to pick a default. And so I'm going to click on this first one here, and you can barely see it, but that first one is highlighted in green. So there's a green frame around that first one where it says 2x4R13. So that's been designated as the default. So now when I create rooms and boxes on the floor plans, the walls that it creates are going to be two by six R13 walls. Okay. And you can change all this stuff. You can change the framing factor and you can say that it's a, you know, a concrete wall, if it's a knee wall and all that other, other kind of stuff. Okay. So this is all totally changeable. I'm just going to leave it at a two by four R13 wall. because That's very common, very typical of existing home construction. Okay. So you can do that for everything. You can change the window types. You got, dual pane, vinyl low E, you got triple pane, um, you've got um, uh, clear windows. So there's all different kinds of windows, all different kinds of doors, floors, ceilings. We even have different kinds of ducts, okay? So there's vinyl flex, sheet metal ducts, duct board, and all that other kind of stuff, okay? So that's all that stuff lives in the tab that we call library. And you can change those at any time. If your house happens to have two different kinds of walls, you can set your default to one type of wall, you can build a bunch of rooms that way, and then you can set the default to a different type of wall, and then the rest of the rooms that you build will have that new default, all right? So you can have different kinds of walls and stuff like that. All right, we'll, we'll show you some examples on that. Um, all right, then it says the next tab, let's go to the floor plan tab. And you'll see all that input for yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that in just a second. I, I did that because I, I didn't like seeing that um, that PowerPoint slide <laughs> where the floor plan was. So I, so I imported the floor plan. I kind of jumped ahead here, but I'll show you exactly how I did that. 
Okay. So um, in floor plan mode, our choices are elevations. So when you click on elevations, this little box down here shows up. And elevations is where you specify how many floors your house is going to have. Okay. And so right now, this is just how it comes default. So um, it allows you to model trust heels or heel trusses. Okay. Uh, it, it, some people call those energy efficient trusses. Not very common, but we did want to make that an, an option in there because Manual J does recognize those. Um, and then you have room one and you have the height in feet and then floor one, the height in feet. So I have room one height is eight feet. I can change that to nine if I want to. If I hit the right button. Okay. And then I can also add floors if I want to. So if I hit add floor, watch what happens when I add a floor. It creates a new little floor on this little, this little diagram right here. So I can say the first floor rooms are eight feet high. There's um, a one foot um, TJIs in between them. And then the second floor is eight feet high and then I can designate keel truss if I want to. All right, so this is where you tell the drawing that you're gonna have more than one floor. Uh, this little example house we're gonna do is only gonna have one floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the second floor and just get it back to a, a one floor situation here, okay? So um, if this house was a raised floor house, you might wanna set the floor height to 24 inches or, or something like that. I'm just gonna do a slab. So I'm gonna leave it at half a foot or six inches thick concrete slab, okay? And then it's in the libraries is where you'll tell it what kind of floor. All this is telling you is what is the dimensions of that floor so that when you start drawing your boxes, it, it, it looks correct, okay? Any question? Okay. All right. So the next one, here we go. Oh, by the way, um, in these little, these little menus here, floor plan mode, if you see these little number one, two, three, down the side there, those are shortcuts. So if instead of actually coming over here and clicking on import floor plan or clicking on scale floor plan, um, they make these really cool uh, gamer mouses that have a number pad where your thumb is. And let me see if I can show, let me show, oops, let me remove. If I can get it up here where people can see it. So here's the, here's the cool mouse that I use. If you can see my, my camera there, it's got a little number pad on the side and you just, just go on Amazon and Google gamer mouse and you'll see there's where your thumb goes, there's a number pad. And so those are shortcuts to each one of these little number things. So with my thumb, if I press one, it automatically clicks on that elevation button there. Okay. So that's, that's kind of cool too. Uh, this floor plan is actually, if you go to our download page of our website, uh, where it says downloads, um, there's a one story sample house and then there's some other, I think it's called my first quick model house or something like that. Um, but I can also put a, a, a link in it where everyone can get that as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, go down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. We'll, um, we'll, we'll take a break here in a few minutes. That's, that's the other thing too, is I get talking and I forget how long I talk for. So I need, I'm going to have Connor, remind me or if you guys uh, feel free to get up and take a break if you ever need to for this. Okay. We're scheduled to go for three hours. That is a long time to go um, talking about stuff like this, but um, we'll try to keep it uh, at a good pace and, and keep it at least a little bit entertaining for you guys. I know this is not the most exciting way to spend an evening, uh, but um, we're glad you guys are here. And I think, I think you'll find this really interesting. If you guys do residential HVAC design or you're, you're thinking about learning how to do it. Um, this is a great, this is a great learning experience for you guys. Okay. Um, so let's see, I'll do import floor plan. And because I already have one in here, it's saying, do you want to overwrite what you have? And I'll say, I'll say yes. And, and then it will import any kind of an image file or a uh, PDF file. If you get a set of floor plans from an architect and it's a huge PDF file with a whole bunch of pages to it, don't use that because when you import that, it's just a huge file. And every time the software has to turn that drawing, it's turning this gigantic PDF file. So try to, try to limit it down to just one page if you can. 
And what I typically do is I just I just open it up in the viewer, and then I use the Windows Snip uh, tool, and I take a snip of the floor plan that I want to show in the drawing in the in the software, and it'll save that as a PNG file. And then you can open PNG files in the software. So that's exactly what these two are right here. So this thing that it says floor plan one is a PNG file. It's just a screen snip that I took. And this is it here, the one you've been seeing. Okay, but I just imported it again. Okay. Now, if you look at it closely, you'll notice that it's not to scale. This says 30 feet across the back. Okay. And 20 feet down the side. Well, that 20 actually looks a little bit bigger than that 30. So that means it's not to scale. And so the first thing we need to do is scale this floor plan. And what I mean by that is make it so that, you know, the X and Y are proportional to each other so that it looks like it's the right shape, but also so that one square foot on our drawing on the floor plan represents one square feet in this little virtual world. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in really close down here, and you'll see in the background, you'll see these little squares. Those little squares represent one square foot. So that's a 12 inch by 12 inch square in this virtual world. And what we want to do is make our drawing, basically make our drawing be life size so that a square foot in our virtual world is a square foot on the floor plan. So it's kind of like having a Set of floor plans that's the same size as the house that you're building <laughs> okay that would be kind of interesting if you could do that in real life all right so to do that we've got these dimensions and the longer the dimension you use to scale the house the more accurate it will be um, so we've got 30 feet across the back and we've got 20 feet down the side here okay and um, so i'm gonna hit scale floor plan and you'll see that these little these little stretchable movable arrows show up here. So you grab it. There you go. So you can see I can move and stretch these little arrows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the horizontal one and I'm going to stretch it out to a known dimension. And um, by the way, it's easier if you check this 2D box up here and then check top. And what that does is it is it makes you look straight down and so I'm going to take this little stretchable arrows, which for some reason the, the line's kind of going away, but I'm going to stretch them out to be equal to a known dimension. Oh, okay. How about this? I will, um, if I send you that floor plan, can you somehow get it? I put on the drive. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. I, I, I forgot you guys are going to. Uh, you're going to follow along in this. So bear with me really quick. I'm going to I'm going to get the the um, I'm going to get this floor plan drawing, and I'm going to send it to Connor, and he's going to post a link to it for you. That would be floor plan one. Oh, good idea. To do that, I have to open it. No, it's on the show with your son. Um, all right, just anywhere in here. Okay. So it's up where we are. Okay, there we go. All right, so Connor's going to um, upload that little PNG file. It's called floorplan1.png. He's going to post a link to it in the chat so you guys can open the same little drawing. Okay, great. Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so we're scaling the floor plan. So I've got, I've drugged this little arrow, this little stretchy arrow here, and I've got it to line up with a known dimension of 30 feet. And then down here in this box, I'm going to type 30 and I'm going to hit scale. And now that 30 feet is, if you were to count these little boxes, would be 30 of those boxes wide. Okay, so now the X, the horizontal scale, 
is scaled, but now that just made the other one worse, okay? So now we've got this vertical stretchy arrow, and I'm gonna stretch it to a known dimension of 20 feet. And by, when you click on the arrows, it automatically changes the X scale or the Z scale. Okay, so now we're doing the Z scale. I'm gonna type in 20, I'm gonna hit scale, and there you go. That's what that floor plan should look like. That floor plan is to scale. So if you were to count from this line to this line, if you were to count those little square boxes in the background, there's gonna be 30 of those across the back. And if you count from this line here down to here, there's gonna be 20 of those down the side. So now, yeah. okay. And then when we start drawing boxes on here, the boxes that we draw are going to align with the squares in the background. So you might need to do a little bit of fine tuning. Um, let me show you some of the, um, the, the visual uh, tools that are, that are here. If you look down in the right hand, bottom right hand corner there, this is a little, uh, this changes the view of the floor plan that you're looking at. So we're looking at the first floor. So there's only one here because this is a one story house. Had I left two floors in the elevations when I showed you how to put two floors in there, there'd be two of these boxes right here, okay? And so there's these little check boxes where you can turn things on and off. So we've got a floor plan, we're about to draw some rooms and we might draw a roof too. Um, so if I were to uncheck this floor plan box, it goes away. So I'm just toggling that on and off. And then this little slide here, changes the opacity. So if I slide it to the left, you'll see it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And then pretty soon it's almost invisible and you can see the floor plan all the way through it, okay? So you can adjust the opacity of the floor plan as well as the individual rooms, okay? And so if you want to make the floor plan line up, we've scaled it so it's the right size, but now we wanna make it line up with the, the little boxes in the background. I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna click move floor plan. Now, when I grab the floor plan, it's gonna slide relative to the background. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just getting this corner right here to line up exactly on one of the boxes. And then I can kind of look down here and see if it lines up pretty well too. Okay, so now all I'm doing is just kind of aligning it with the background, okay? So that was scale, move, and then if for any reason you wanted to crop this floor plan to make it smaller, you can do that using crop floor plan as well, okay? Um, let's see. I mentioned there's this button up here for 2D view. I'm gonna uncheck that for a second. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't make as much sense unless I draw a box, but 2D view turns on 2D and 3D view, and I'll show you that when I draw some boxes. Um, but it also, there's these view buttons up here for back, left, front, and right. So if you wanna look at the house from the front, you click the front, click the right, and it just kind of walks you around the back, to the left, back to the front. And if you click top, it looks straight down from above. Okay, so those are just kind of quick, quick controls to get the views to work. But you can also do all that stuff manually with your mouse. So I'm using the wheel to zoom in and out now, to make it zoom in and out. If you use the right button, it'll, it'll sort of pivot around so you can look at it from different views. And then the middle button, which is your roller, if you hold it down for the middle button, it'll slide things around left and right, like so, up and down, left and right. So those, those are just some visual controls that you have to practice with, okay? So I'm gonna go back to top view. I'm gonna just kind of zoom in a little bit here. And um, <clears throat> so the next button is field draw. And we'll talk about field draw in a second. One of the things that I feel very strongly about is that if you're gonna design a residential HVAC design software, it should work for existing homes. You need a way to quickly draw or create a 3D model of an existing home. And so one of the things that we've worked very hard on is this thing called field draw. And that's where you can 
um, use this software to to help you create a set of floor plans if you don't have one. Okay, and we'll 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 do a demo of that later. Uh, but I just want to explain why we're kind of skipping over that button for now. Uh, and I'm going to go to the room button. And I'm going to click on rooms and we have this room mode. Okay. And button one uh, will move rooms and scale them and place them. It's really quick. We're using a new version on this one. So it's oh yeah. Yours different. might look a little bit different than, than this one. We've added some room types and um, we've had to make it so that uh, it's a drop down list instead of just a list that you see. So if, if the controls that I, that you see on my screen are a little bit different than your controls, don't worry about it. It's probably just a newer version that'll, that'll come out in a, in a few days. Okay. All right. So starting on rooms, I'm just going to start and I'm just going to place a basic rectangle room. And if I click on that, this, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different kinds of rooms. These are room boxes. This is not necessarily a room. Uh, it's just a box. And then what you do is you create the room out of boxes. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're just going to start with a basic rectangle room. I'm going to hold down the Alt button and I'm going to left click the mouse. And you'll see it places this 3D box. OK. And the size of that box defaults to whatever it says right here. So it defaults to 10 feet by 10 feet. And then the height was what you set back on elevations in your floor plan. Remember we said it was eight foot tall rooms? All right, so when we draw a box, it's gonna be 10 foot by 10 foot by eight. And it's gonna have, if you look down in here, I'm gonna zoom in, it's gonna have a six inch thick floor. That's a little hard to see. Let me turn up the opacity of the room. So these opacity slides, I showed you how it works for the floor plans. It also works for the room. See, I can make the rooms a lot darker by sliding this little slide down in the bottom here. And so there you can see there's a six inch floor down in the bottom because that's what we said in the um, elevations that we wanted to, to default to, okay? So now placing these 3D boxes can be a little awkward um, in 3D mode. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down from the top. So I'm going to click the top button. And you can still see this box has some kind of 3D to it. We call that parallax. That means that it's um, you're looking at it from a different angle. So you're seeing walls and they're going to have these kind of you know, obtuse angles to them and stuff like that. And that can be a little disconcerting sometimes when you're trying to move things around and line them up. So at this point, it's actually easier to be in 2D mode. So I'm going to click this 2D button up here and you'll see that it flattens everything. So that 3D box is now just a square. Okay. So I placed it, it's 10 by 10. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to build my house room by room out of these boxes by, by stretching them and, and aligning them. So this is a 10 by 10 box. So I'm going to pull it over into this corner and then I'm just going to stretch it out this way to cover the kitchen. And I'm going to make the rooms a little less opaque so you can see through it and see the name of the floor below. Okay. So all I did is I just, I just stretched it out and I brought it over and I'm just going to get it to line up with the walls. So now that box is lining up with what's called the kitchen dining on the floor plans. Okay. Now I'm just going to build the house out of boxes by alt click. I'm going to place a box there and I'm going to stretch it out and I'm going to go down here and place a box here. Now, when you see this pink color, all that means is that you place the box that overlaps with another one. Okay. And then you just have to pull it away and that pink color goes away. The other cool thing is that notice how these boxes collide with each other. I can't slide this box on top of that other one. It's running into it. So they collide, which makes it actually a lot easier to build the house. Okay, so I just bring that over and drag that out. I'm gonna make the bath its own room. Bring that over. And then the last room is bedroom two. There we go. So now the, the, the entire floor is covered. The entire floor plan is covered with boxes that align with the various rooms. 
And I did it this way because this is how I want my load counts to do. And when you're trying to decide what you want to call a room, uh, it's basically call a room whatever you want to have its own supply register. Okay, so in this little house, we've got a kitchen, a living, we've got a bedroom with a walk-in closet, we've got another bedroom, and then a little bathroom and a little tiny hallway here, okay? And I just kind of decided in advance that I'm gonna put a, a supply register in the kitchen and dining, I'm gonna put a supply register in the living and family room, I'm gonna put one in bedroom one, but I'm not gonna put one in the walk-in closet, okay? Um, I have found my general rule of thumb is that most walk-in closets don't need a register unless that walk-in closet is on an exterior corner of a house and maybe has two exposed walls or if it has a window in a walk-in closet. You know, some of these big houses have these really huge walk-in closets, but this one's not worth it. So I'm just going to include the load of this walk-in closet in the load with bedroom one and I'm gonna put one supply register in this room that's gonna serve both the walk-in closet and bedroom one, okay? I'm gonna put a supply register in the living and family room, and I'm gonna put a supply register in bedroom two, and then bedroom, or bath, the bath, I'm gonna put one in the bathroom, but I'm not gonna put another one in the hallway. If, I, if for any reason I wanted to put one in the hallway, I would have to draw a different box for the hallway like this. So I place a box here. So now if I were to do it like this, it would do a separate load calc for this little box and a separate load calc for that box. But I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna put um, a supply register in this hallway. I wanna include the hallway in with the bathroom. So there's two ways I can do that. I can click on that and then I can hit shift, click, to highlight both of those. And then over here, there's something called group. So now when I group those together, they work as one. So you see those two boxes I created now are stuck together. And when it does the load calc, it'll do those as one individual box, okay, or room. Uh, the other way to do it, if I ungroup those, I can just delete one of these, just highlight it, hit delete, and then stretch this out so that it covers that. You wanna make sure that your entire floor plan is covered with a box so that every part of the house is included in, in at least one room or the other. If for some reason you weren't paying attention and you maybe you made this little box a little shorter than it should be, if you look right here, there's this little tiny sliver of house that's not included in the boxes that we've drawn. And so if we were to leave it like this, what the software thinks is that's like a little courtyard, a little one foot by five foot wide courtyard. And so it's going to treat this as an exterior wall and it's going to treat all this. So imagine like a little hole protruding down inside the house. And now all these walls that are adjacent to that little box are now exterior walls. Well, we don't want that. Okay. So there's a, um, a button on here. Where is that in there? that checks, check alignment, okay? So after you've drawn your house, one of the things you wanna do is there's a button over here called check alignment. And that just is looking for walls that are really close together and it's gonna highlight them just to make sure it's gonna say, hey, is this really what you meant to do? So if I check that button, it's gonna think about it for a second. And it is too close. Okay. What if I pull this one down and try? No. All right. Sorry about that. We have a little issue with that. But what it'll do is this: these little walls here will highlight in pink, and you'll look at it and you'll say, "Oh shoot, that's not what I meant to do." And so that's a that's a um, a signal for you to go back and stretch these walls out. So that way you don't accidentally leave any these little holes in the house, okay? All right, so I drew these in 2D. Let me go back and uncheck the 2D box so that you can actually see what it looks like in 3D. Okay, so there it is. Now we've drawn this house and 
in this data tab up here, it's calculating all these areas of the walls and the ceiling. I'll show you that in a second. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just did that. I just showed them a grouping. Okay. It just so it just if you have like an irregularly shaped room, that's generally how you do it. Yeah, I'll show you some more complex houses. This is a really simple house where you can make everything out of just rectangles. What if you had a bay window? All right. What if you had a on the back of the house you had a bay window that came out? Well, you can't make a bay window. It's got these little 45 degree walls in there. You can't make a bay window out of rectangles. So you're gonna have to use some of these other choices. There's you can do triangle rooms like this. That's what a triangle room looks like. And those can be stretched however you want. Oh, by the way, this green handle in the middle will make things taller like that. Okay, so you can do triangle rooms like that. Uh, the other thing, too, is you can do vaulted ceilings. So this, the way this is drawn is, is it has a flat ceiling. What if this living room and the kitchen, the ceiling of the kitchen was vaulted up like that? Okay, these rooms over here are flat and these are vaulted. Well, you can do vaulted ceilings, too. So I will do, click on vaulted ceiling, and I'll hit Alt-click, and it places it on top of the room the tab button rotates it. Then you just get it to line up with the room. You can shrink it with this green handle here. So I'm gonna shrink it down, make it a little shorter. And then I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna put one on top of the kitchen as well. Rotate it using the tab button, get it to line up. So we'll use a green handle and shrink it down. And there we go. Now we've got the living room family and the kitchen are vaulted. And the reason I did those separate from each other, I could have just made one vault go all the way across. But remember, we want to do room by room load counts. We want the ceiling area up here to be associated with this floor down below. That's why I did them separate. And now what I need to do is group those so that it'll 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 add the load of this vaulted ceiling to the load of the room before. And to do that, I click one, I hit shift, I click the other, and then I hit group. And I go over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Click one, hit shift, click the other, and then hit group. And what it does now is it locks those two together. In fact, if you see, I'll drag it away and they stay together. See, so there's the kitchen. Come over here and here's the living family room and they're all locked together. So that's how you check to make sure they locked is that they can, when you move them, they all get moved together, all right? So there we go. We've got a vaulted ceiling in the living family and we've got a vaulted ceiling in the kitchen dining, okay? Now, why is that important? Why, what's the benefit of 3D? Well, if you're in 2D and you're looking straight down on this floor plan and somewhere in the floor plans, it says vaulted ceiling, vaulted ceiling. You know, you would have to know that somewhere up here is a knee wall. And a knee wall is a wall that separates house from attic, okay? And when you're looking at something in 2D, you can't see that. And you would have to know it's there. You would have to know the height and the width of it so that you can calculate the area. But the way we drew it, in the software knows it's there because we drew it. So we drew it in 3D. So we can see it in 3D. And the wall I'm talking about is this wall right here, as well as this wall right here. So when you're in 3D, you can see that stuff. Also, how about this triangle right here? That's a substantial amount of surface area where there's heat transfer. So we want to make sure that that gets calculated in the load calculations, OK? And I'll show you where those are all tabulated together. And when you look at it in 3D, you can see that stuff. And so you can make sure that it gets calculated. Whereas if you're in a 2D software, this is what you see. And how do you know that that wall, that knee wall is calculated there? How do you know that triangle wall is calculated there and there? So that's where the real benefit of 3D comes into play is it allows you to see that kind of stuff. And when you draw the house, you know that it's be count, being counted because you drew it. 
and the software is saying, okay, that's four feet tall, 10 feet wide, that's 40 square feet. So there's a table where that's all being tabulated. And I'll show you that in just a second, okay? All right, what's next on rooms here? We got check alignment. All right, the next thing is we gotta put some windows in this house, okay? Um, so if you look on the floor plan, this is how architects will typically designate windows, 6040. And what that means is that's architectural nomenclature that is six foot, zero inches wide by four foot, zero inches tall. And you just have to get used to that, okay? Um, that's just how they do it. If you read a lot of architectural plans, you'll get used to that. So this is a 3068 door, means three foot, zero inches by six foot, eight inches tall, okay? And we've made it in the software so that you can enter windows the, using that architectural nomenclature, or you can enter it, if you're used to just saying six foot, zero inches by four foot, zero inches, you can enter it that way too, okay? So I'm gonna go up here to windows, the next tab over from rooms. Um, is there anything else I need to mention before I do that? Oh, um, can you click on the vault extender, please? Okay. And the, the actual Oh. This one? Yeah. You'll see at the bottom left, there's a, a, sorry, you can see at the bottom left, there's a position and scale. Uh, so if someone was asking how to de designate the height of the vault, in the vault, oh. um, you, you just grab that green handle and, it, and drag it up or down to say how tall it is. And the red handle will be like how long that is. Yeah, let me show them that really quick. Thank you. I meant to, I meant to do that. I, I forgot. So I'm going to ungroup this really quick. Let me, so I got this little vaulted ceiling kind of separate now. I'm going to put it over here. And if you look down here, it tells you the room name, 17. So this, there, it names them for you automatically. So this is right now it's being called a room because it's not grouped with anything. And it'll tell you the position and then it'll tell you the scale. Um, it's kind of hard because there's a little bit of text covering it up there, but um, it says width 15, length 10, and height four and a half. So if I grab this green handle and I raise it up two clicks, it will say five and a half down here. And if I stretch it over a little bit, it'll change this, the width, okay? So that's how you know. It's telling you the dimension of that box down here in the lower left-hand corner. Okay, so let me just get those back real quick. Um, and I did mean for it to be four feet, not five feet, four and a half. So let's see if we can make that one a little small too. There we go. And then I ungrouped them, so I need to group these back together. Shift, shift, click, group. Okay, now those are those are back stuck together. Okay, good. All right. Um, okay, so windows. So we have a 6040 window, we have a 3068 door, a 2020 window, 4040, and they go around the back of the house. The way you draw windows is up here. So I'm on the window tab, window mode. Windows is already clicked, but I can also click doors or I can click windows here. Um, so I'm gonna click windows and I'm going to, you see this window here? If I hold the Alt key, and then click and just drag, you'll see it makes this little blue line. And I wanna kind of line it up with this window down here. Um, it's just kind of a way to check because this says 6040. And so I just drug it out and it's saying 5.85, which is almost six. So that looks pretty good. And by the way, you can click on them and move them around and stuff like that. And so now where it says enter size up here, this, this top button, I'm just gonna type in, just like I see right here, 6040, I'm just gonna type that in, 6040. I'm gonna hit enter, and there is a 6040 window, okay? Now, the other thing that it's good to know is how far down is it from the top? So what's the distance between the top of the window and um, say the plate height? So I'm just gonna come over here where it says distance from top, I'm gonna to type one, and there you go. All right, so there's a 6040 window, one foot down from the plate height. I can move it around just by clicking on it and dragging it like that, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the window. So Alt, click, drag, 
and then type in 2020, enter. And I'm going to say this one is one foot down. Here's a 4040. 4040. And put down. And then scroll around. So I can I can manually scroll around, or I can use these these quick view buttons up here. I can look at it from the right side. I can look at it from the back. Here's a couple windows. So we've got a 40. 4040. One foot down. I'm going to come back and do the, the walls or the doors next. And then I've got a 4030. One foot down. And there's all our windows. Go back to the front here. Okay. Now I need to do the exterior walls. You don't have to do interior walls. So you see there's a, a sorry, I'm saying well, doors. You don't have to do interior doors. There's a door going out of the bathroom here to the hallway. You don't have to worry about those. There's no heat transfer through those. It's only the exterior doors that you have to worry about. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna click on doors and it defaults to a 3068 door. So there it is. And you'll see they're a little bit different color. I need to drag it down so that it's Sitting on the ground. Oh, no. Sorry, but okay. That's right. So it's not it's not touching the bottom. It's a little floating in the air, just a little bit. But that doesn't matter. The the the, the point is is that we've said there's a 3068 door, and remember in our libraries we had door types. So our default door type is a solid wood door with a certain U factor. So that door has heat transfer through it. And it needs to know the size and it needs to know the type because manual J is going to say there's a certain number of BTUs passing through that door. There's a certain number of BTUs passing through the windows and it needs to know that information. It doesn't need to know whether it's right here or, or here or this way or if the windows down here. Um, as far as where stuff sits, that's purely visual. That's just to make it look accurate so that you can kind of check your work. Okay. Obviously, if you were, you know, if I were to do this manual J calculation, and if I put all the windows down like this, and I put the doors like, you know, way over here, if I drew the house like that and did the load counts, that wouldn't change anything. That wouldn't change the numbers, okay? But it looks funny, and it's hard to check. And if you showed that to someone, they'd say, what the heck are you doing? So it just looks better to have things, you know, sort of in an accurate position. Okay, uh, you can, by the way, put skylights. Let me show you a skylight really quick. Let's say there was a skylight in the kitchen. It's just like a window, you just drag it. And let's say it's a 4020. Actually, how about a 2040? 2040. There we go. There's a skylight. I think I'll go ahead and leave it there. I kind of like a skylight in the kitchen. Okay. All right, the other thing it's doing is it's looking at this wall area and it's subtracting the windows from it. So the software will do a net wall area because it'll subtract out the doors and windows for you automatically. <clears throat> all right, so we got our windows, we got our doors, we got our walls, our ceilings are all on here. Let's go ahead and look in the data tab real quick. So I'm going to skip a couple things here. I'm going to go straight to the data tab because I want to show you that what's happening when we draw these rooms and these doors. The software is calculating the area of all these surfaces of these 3D objects that we're drawing. All right. So I'm going to click on the data tab. Uh, a couple things. Uh, someone was asking what if the door has a large window in it. And that's one thing you missed the door on the back. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to be very observant. Thank you for that. I did miss a door. How about that? Oops. Slowing in the mode. Doors. Oh, click. Thank you. Good catch. Okay. So, um, what was the other question about windows? Can we can we draw a window inside a door? Actually, <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, it's going to give an error. Um, we never really talked about that. Yeah. So. 
Um, basically, the general rule of thumb is is if a if a door like a French door is a wooden door, but it's mostly glass, is you draw it as all glass. Okay. If it's a door that has a small window in it, um, you can either uh, ignore it or you can draw a small window off to the side. Um, I think what we, if we haven't already, and I can't remember if we did this, if we haven't already, we'll make it so that you can draw a little window. Yeah, see, it's gonna give us an error. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pull this window off. So whatever that window is, just, just scoot it off to the side. We'll make it so they can overlap. Okay. All right, good question. So again, if it's if it's mostly glass, draw it as all glass. If it has a little bit of window in it, draw a little window off to the side. And in one of our next releases, we'll make it so that you can draw the window inside the door. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see, where was I? Oh, data tab. Okay. Um, before I go to the data tab, uh, it's, it's been an hour already. Time flies when you're having fun. Let's go ahead and take about a, a 10 minute break. Everyone can, uh, we'll get a drink, um, uh, go to the bathroom, take a 10 minute break. It is uh, seven o'clock right now. We will reconvene at 10 minutes after seven. And if you have any questions, feel free to type those into the chat and, and, um, hopefully everyone got the, um, you got the link to the little floor plan. So if you, if you do have the software open and you want to follow along, we uploaded a link to, so you can download this exact same floor plan, this simple little house. Okay. Uh, all right, so everyone go ahead and take a break. We'll reconvene at um, 10 minutes after seven. Um, and um, great, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Check if that's true. <laughs> I think California can say 50% or more of the window. 50% or more of the window. Yeah, for energy code compliance, if the if the um, if the if the door is more than half glass, you draw it as all glass. It counts it counts it as all glass. And the reason is is because uh, French doors, when you go and buy a French door, it's tested just like a window. It's tested like an off-the-shelf window. So it's going to have a U factor and a solar heat gain coefficient for that French door as though it was a window. So it'll be tested like a window, it'll have numbers like a window, um, uh, and that's primarily for new construction. Um, but if it's, a, if it's a big door that has a little window in it, um, honestly, those are, there's not really a good way to, to deal with those. For energy calculations, uh, you, would, you would just model those areas separately. You would calculate the door area, and then calculate the window area and call it a window with a little bit smaller door. And that's basically what I said by saying, just draw the window off to the side. So that window, the heat transfer through that window will get counted. It'll get calculated. Uh, it just, the way I told you to draw it just looks kind of funny because the window's off to the side, but Connor's gonna program it and make it so that you can draw the window on top of the door so that it looks more normal. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Can you give me another cup of tea, please? Yeah. Um, just because we're on the break, uh, someone was asking how to do over in front of you know, uh, we can get to that later, but mm -hmm. if you want to just show real quick. Yeah, I'll show you really quick. Um, we, we don't have it um, where you can draw an overhang yet. We will. Um, it's just turned out to be a lot more complicated. Um, to program, yeah, to program. Um, the way Manual J and the way most energy compliance software treats overhangs is very, very simple. Um, all it wants to know is a couple dimensions. It wants to know it wants to know how high the overhang is above the window and how far out it sticks. Well, if we start allowing you to draw overhangs and you draw a really bizarre overhang that's at an angle and it's not square and all sorts of weird stuff how do we convert that into simple numbers that the software can use? We're working on that. And, and my goal is to make it so that it will do that. But if the software that we're using that's doing the calculations, whether it's energy gauge or, or an Manual J calculation or CBEC Res or Energy Pro or any of those, if all it's asking for is really simple numbers, 
we just made it so you can type those numbers in up here. So we just drew a bunch of windows. So this window right here, uh, when I click on it, it highlights F1, so the front window number one. And I would just type in the overhang height, which is how far it is above the window. Let's say it's one foot above and it sticks out two feet. So I just, that's, that's all the software needs to know is that it's one foot above the window and it sticks out past the window two feet. That's all Manual J wants to know to do a load count on it. That's a very simplified way to do it. What we would like it to do eventually, and I'll get to this in a second, you're getting a, a preview of it, is when we draw a roof on here. If I were to draw a roof that looks something like this, I'm going to draw part of it right now, that stuck out, wouldn't it be cool if the software said, oh, that's two feet out and that's one foot above, let's put those numbers in for it. And we can do that for really simple roofs. The problem is, is that for really complex roofs, it, it becomes very complicated very fast. Um, and so we just haven't programmed that part yet. Um, so you just, you just type those numbers in manually by going into the data tab, going into the windows box, and these last two columns here, overhang height, overhang length. That's what that means, okay? All right. Hey, Russ. Yeah. Hey, Russ, I had a question on this kind of, on this area right here. Say you got a house that's like the, the whole backyard, the whole back area of the house. You know, you have a say a sliding glass door and a couple of two or three windows in the whole back side of the house, but that whole back side has an overhang like a uh, patio cover, which at my last yep. house had just that. So would that yep. would you add that in there like a whole full on patio cover? Would that yeah. affect? Yeah, you yeah. do. So let's say it's these two windows here, and you had an eight foot deep patio cover that was you know the t the patio cover sort of lined up with this the plate yeah. height here. So all you would do is you would just go into each one of these windows and say the overhang height is one foot above the window and the overhang depth is eight feet. Okay. And now, and now Manual J just imagines that there's this eight foot, you can't see it here, but Manual J will know that the sun is not going to get underneath that eight foot yeah. until it gets really low on the horizon. Okay. okay. Uh, that, was, that was the other thing I haven't talked about yet is this, this harmless little north arrow sitting over here, that's very important. And I'll talk about that in just a second. All right, thanks. Yep. Are they grouped together? Make sure they're grouped. Oh, so the volume is going to be under project tab down on the bottom here. Um, not counting the volume. I think, okay, that's what it's saying, not to not look at that. Do you want to see that? It looks like it is. It's online, it is. Data. Rooms. Volume. Uh, it looks like it is. It might make sure that they're grouped together or we don't have the, we'll have the, um, oh, okay. if you look like that's, um, looks like the old versions were having that issue. Yeah, um, when you click on it, make sure both of them are getting highlighted. 
to check and we'll get it in. I don't remember that being an issue. Because that blue is ten. 15, 16, 8, 8, 8, 8. The thing is, on your on August 9. Make sure they're grouped. All right, it's about 10 after, so let's start back up. Start slowly in case people are still straggling back in. Hey, Russ. Um, Russ, yes. quick, I just have a question. You see how the you got the color right there, the turquoise color, and you got the vaulted part? Am I might just seeing this wrong? That looks like the, the top is different color. Does that mean something different? Like, if um, you put them all together, should it all be like as one room? It, it's because it's all highlighted means it's all being counted as one room. And when I click on it here, if I go up into the table, can you tell that this row, uh, room 20, is all highlighted? So that's, I think you should change this part. Yeah, so that whole thing is counted as room 20. The okay. fact that it's a slightly different color, just, different it's just kind of reminding you. Okay. It's just kind of reminding you that it's two different boxes. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. Let me, let me tell you real quick. I'm just going to play around this for a second. I'm going to go back to room mode. And remember, I grouped these together. So if I move them, they both move together. If I were to go in and ungroup those, now they don't move together. They move separately from each other. And so now if I go back into the data tab rooms, now they're separate. See, if I click on that one, it only highlights that one. And if I click on that one, it only highlights that one. Now those are being counted as two separate rooms. So it's going to do a separate load count for those two. Okay. That's not what we want. We're only going to put one register in there, and so we want those two together. So I'm going to go back to rooms, and click, shift, click, and then group them. Now they're now they're they're locked together. So when I go back into the data tab, there's this there's one less room on this list here, and if I click in it, they all highlight together. Like that. Yeah, the fact that it's a different color is just. Uh, it's just a shading issue, and it's just kind of remind you that that was made from two different boxes. Okay, I just want to make sure that shading didn't mean anything special. So, yep. all right, nope. good question. All right, so back to the data tab, and the data tab is where all the numbers happen. Okay, when you draw a box. That box has six sides to it, and it's going to calculate the area of each of those six sides. If you take that box and you slide it up and touch another box, it's not going to count the walls where those two boxes are touching, okay? Because now that, that shared wall is an interior wall and there's no heat transfer to it, so it's not being counted. So it does all that math for you just based on how you drew it in 3D, all right? So this data tab has all these different tables in here. We just happen to be currently on the room table, but let me just kind of go down the list and show you what's happening here. So the first one, and it's kind of starting, it's starting big and working down small, if you will. So the, the biggest item on the list is your systems, okay? I have not drawn an HVAC system, so it doesn't know how many we have yet. I'll get to that in just a second. The next 
item is rooms. So I drew a bunch of rooms in here. Um, I drew a bunch of boxes and then I grouped those boxes together to be rooms, okay? And so it is automatically named those rooms and it just gave them some numbers, okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna give them some actual names. So if I look in here and this I kind of show you how you can turn off the rooms. If you wanna see the floor plan, remember down here these little view controls, I uncheck that box and the rooms all go away. So now I'm only looking at the floor plan. When I highlight something, it'll come back. Okay, so let's see here. That was the kitchen over here, bed one. So this first one here, room 16, is the kitchen. So I'm just gonna type in, I'm gonna use shorthand, K-I-T for kitchen. And then this next one over here, bed one, if I click on that, that's gonna be bed one. The next one is the living dining. And the next one is what was it, bed two. I can click off of it to see the name. Bed two. And then the last one is the bathroom. So now my, my room names sort of make a little bit more sense. Okay, instead of just saying room one, room five, room 12 or whatever, now they've got new rooms. So when I look at this table, it's easier to tell which is which. Okay, so let's see, the next one is then boxes. So it does keep track of all the boxes individually if for some reason you, you wanna do that, but that's not very common actually. The next one is windows. So here's a list of all the windows that I drew. And so if I highlight by clicking a row on this table, it will highlight the window on the drawing. So if I highlight that one, highlight that one back there, if I highlight that one, okay. And then look, skylight. So it named this one, it knows that that's a skylight because I drew it on the top of the vaulted ceiling. So it automatically names it sky something, okay. And so if I wanted to change these names, I could, but these are fine. L1, uh, L means left, B means back, F means front, and so on, okay? And then skylights are named skylights. Um, the default types here, dual pane, vinyl, low E, that comes from our libraries. Remember I set the default in the library, and so as I drew the windows, it automatically assigned them the default. If I wanted to change them for whatever reason, I can do it here as well. So let's say, for some reason, this front window was different than all the other windows. I can come in here, I click on it. It highlights this one. So that's row, that window is called F1. It's in the living room. And it's currently set as a two pane vinyl low E. Well, let's say that's some fancy window. They, I don't know, it's a stained glass window or something. Uh, it's a decorative window, it's something else. So I can pick it and I can assign it that window to be something else. It can be different. So you can do that on a window by window basis, um, however you want to, okay? Same thing with walls and ceilings. So um, we got walls here. Look at this list. These are all the walls that I drew. And the reason there's so many is because we're doing room by room load counts. So it's looking at this one room and it's saying this room has two walls on it. And so it's treating those walls different than these walls back here because these walls go to another room. So it's gonna do a load count on each room. And that's very important as we'll see later to size your ducts, okay? And so um, one of the interesting things, if you just click on the first row and it highlights the first row, that's wall number one, it's in the kitchen. It's a two by four R13 because that's what we set as the default. The net area is 120 square feet. It's on the back of the house and it's facing north. It has a tilt of 90 and it's touching the outside. So what this touching here does is it says what's on the other side of the wall from the house, okay? Uh, let me show you really quick. 
if I were to draw something, some of you might say, hey, this house has no garage on it. <laughs> About interior walls, okay. So interior walls don't matter. Interior walls, Manual J ignores interior walls because, and by interior walls, I mean between two conditioned spaces. So like this wall right here between these two bedrooms, this wall right there, and Manual J ignores that because there's no heat transfer through that because Manual J assumes the same temperature in these rooms. When you when you tell Manual J what set temperature you're you're setting your thermostat to, it assumes that all the rooms are that temperature. However, there's a different kind of an interior wall, and that is a wall between the house and a garage or an unconditioned space. So let me back out of this really quick and just kind of show you guys what you would do if you wanted to put a garage on this house. So I just hit Alt, click. I'm going to play. Oops, I'm still in um, vaulted ceiling mode. I got to go back to rectangle room. Alt click. I'm going to slide it up against the house. I'm going to make it however big it needs to be. We've got a one car garage. We've got a two car garage. We've got a three car garage. Whatever you want. Okay. And, and so now that's a garage. That is unconditioned space, but we have to tell it that. And Steve, this is where shading actually is kind of important because it's the same color as these other rooms, which means it's also a conditioned space. Watch what happens when I click on it and I go over here to these choices and it says conditioned, unconditioned, earth, or other conditioned space. So those are all the things that could possibly happen on the other side of a wall that's in a house. All right, so I'm gonna click unconditioned because it's a garage, and now you'll notice it's a different color. That's a demising wall, yeah. So now this wall is what we call a demising wall. It's between conditioned space and an enclosed unconditioned space. And so this wall right here, if we go back to their data tab, back to walls, which we're already in walls, and we click on this wall, and you see how it highlights it? It highlights it here, and you'll notice now it says, what is it touching? What's on the other side of this wall from the house? Now it's unconditioned space. So it's gonna treat this wall differently than say this wall, because it's not a demising wall. Okay. Good point. All right. So you see what we did here is now we made this garage, this unconditioned space, is a little bit shorter than the house. So now there's a wall right here. You see this little wall here? That's different. It's being treated different than this wall right here. This wall is between the house and the garage. This little wall right here is between the house and outside. That little wall right there. And the software knows that because we drew it that way. So let me go back to the data tab, back in the walls. And now if I want to know which wall it is on this big, huge table, I just click on it. See how it highlights different? So it's this wall right here. It's wall number eight. It's 20 square feet. It's on the right, and it's adjacent to outside. So this is outside down here. Whereas this wall right here, which they were the same wall until we drew the garage there. See how it highlights separately? And that's this wall here, which is 60 square feet. Okay, so remember that. We've got 60 square feet here, and we've got 20 square feet here. So these two walls are being treated differently because of the way I drew the garage. Now, let me go back to rooms and let's change the garage a little bit. Let me bring it out a couple feet. And so now this wall should get smaller and that wall should get bigger. We had 20 and 60 before. Now let's see what happens. Drag the down. Okay, there you go. So Connor's suggesting that I make the garage shorter too. So. So now, now what happens, look up here, this is gonna be different as well, but you're messing up my example. <laughs> okay, let me do that in a second. So data, rooms, because I can't remember numbers that long. The walls, yeah, so this, was, this wall was 20, now it's 12 because I made it smaller. This wall was 60, now it's 68 because I made it bigger, okay? 
Now, what Connor wants to show you is if I go to rooms, I click on this, and let's say I make this garage a little bit shorter than the house. Okay, so now we've got this wall up here that we have to look at. And again, this is this is the real beauty of 3D because you can see that. If you were looking at a 2D program like this, you would never know. You would say, hmm, this wall, this garage is shorter than the house. There must be something up here. I'm gonna have to calculate, I'm gonna have to figure out what that is. But just by drawing it in 3D, you know that it's there, okay? So now this wall, a demising wall between the house and the garage is gonna be treated then this little L-shaped wall here. So we'll go back to data, to the rooms, pull it down where you can see it. Click on that, see how it highlights like in an L shape? So that's this wall number nine here. It's 20.5 square feet. And just by drawing it correctly, it'll do the math correctly. Okay, so that's pretty cool. All right, well, this example house doesn't have a garage. Ah, what the heck? I'm gonna leave it on there. I think I, I'm a firm believer that all houses should have a garage. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on there. <laughs> all right. Now the other interesting thing that you can do that's kind of cool, uh, if you have a big enough screen, I'm gonna bring this house down where I can see the whole thing. Um, these little boxes here, you can you can move, make your table, you can size your table. But I do want to see the whole thing while I'm doing this. So I'm gonna size it right there. I'm gonna bring this down. By the way, you can do multiple screens. You can stretch this whole screen out over two screens if you want to. Um, and you can drag, yeah, that's a good point too. So I can, this handle up here will allow me to drag the table anywhere I need to. Okay, but what I wanna show you is this is a good quick way to check your work. So if I go up here and I highlight this first wall, that's this wall back here. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the down arrow on my keyboard and scroll down that table. So I'm gonna go wall one, wall two, wall three, wall four, wall five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now you're thinking, hmm, what are these other walls? What other walls could there possibly be? And if you're looking in 2D, you would never see these, but in 3D, oh, that one's okay. How about that one? That's a knee wall. That wall is between the house and the attic space that's above these rooms here. So there's, there's a knee wall there. There's this triangle wall on the outside. There's a knee wall here. And then there's that triangle wall on that side. And if you were not in 3D, you might never see those four walls. That one, that one, that one, and that one. If you're in 2D, Looking down from the top, you can't see them. Okay, so again, that's kind of the beauty of 3D. So there we go, we got our walls. Again, we can change walls if we want to. If for some reason this wall here has a different insulation than this wall here, we just click on it, we come in here to name type or type name, and we can pick a different wall. Okay, it's, it's adjacent to attic, and we haven't drawn a roof yet, um, so we will actually tell it uh, that, it's, that it's adjacent to attic. We can tell it that it's a knee wall. All right, it's, um, let's see, this one here. And Manual J actually treats, um, let's see, it treats knee walls actually more like a ceiling. And so we do need to change this wall type because we have it as a two by four R13, which is the same as all the other walls. So let me go back, I'm gonna go back to the libraries and I'm gonna see what our choices are for walls, wall types, and uh, knee wall. So, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna change one of these. Actually, I'm gonna add one. I'm gonna say um, copy. And so it's gonna add a new one down here. I'm gonna call this new wall and under wall assemblies there should be a choice please be a choice for me. there we go so there's a choice for knee wall i can say it's r13 i can say it's something else if i want to let's just say it's r13 and then over here it's going to want to know um 
what kind of insulation? Is it bat? Is it blown? Is it double bat? And what is the truss type? Is it wood or metal? Okay, so now I've just created a knee wall and as a type in our libraries. So I'm going to go back to the data tab. I'm going to find that knee wall and I'm going to change it to the type that I called a knee wall. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Knee wall. There we go. So now Manual J knows that this attic is, this wall is adjacent to an attic and it'll actually get treated different than say this wall because it's facing the front of the house. Um, I haven't drawn a roof on this yet. Um, the roof that we draw currently um, doesn't really change anything. It's purely for looks. Um, let me just do that really quick for you to show you how it draws roofs. Um, for roofs. So I'm in the roof tab. I'm going to click. And it's going to draw this little roof over here. And kind of similarly to how you draw rooms, it just stretches out. And let's see. I need to rotate it. Home options for insulation. Um, you just help the R value. All Manual J wants to know is R value. It doesn't matter if it's bat or blown in uh, or, or foam or anything like that. It's just R value is all that matters. Yeah. I'm not sure why on knee walls it matters for some reason, um, to be honest. Um, right. So obviously I'm no architect, but um, I just drew a roof on top of our garage and that's where our short garage roof looks really funny. But um, so on these roofs, you can draw these roofs. You can um, you can make it a hip roof. You can do all kinds of interesting stuff with it. Uh, you can do multiple roofs and kind of you know clump them together. Uh, let me give this a little bit more overhang. To do overhangs, it's very very simple. If you know this distance and you know this height right here, you just go into the data tab. You find that window by clicking on it. It's this one here, and you just you enter a uh, overhang height and an overhang length. So this is where you put your overhang. Eventually, we want to have it where when you draw a roof, it'll do that automatically for you. But the challenge is um, that, as I was explaining at the break, the challenge is if you draw your roof weird, how do you convert that to a simple number? Because all Manual J wants to know is height and length. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that roof just get it out of the way. All right. So um, I should mention too, under libraries, ceilings, um, the type of ceiling that you model, I was actually gonna get to this in just a second. Um, you've got under attic is your styles and then you've got cathedral, you've got under neighbor, you've got all these choices here. Our default was under attic, which is what these rooms are down here. If I go back to the data tab, I go to ceilings, this ceiling and this ceiling are different than these ceilings down here. So I need to create a ceiling for these. And those are going to be uh, cathedral ceilings or vaulted ceilings, and I don't, Oh yeah, I do. I've got a cathedral ceiling in my choices right now. So I'm going to highlight it. It's, it's this one. I'm going to change it to cathedral. I'm going to highlight this one. And I'm going to change that one to cathedral. And as far as attic and stuff like that, as I was just showing you, that gets specified when you designate this these ceiling types. You say this ceiling is under an attic, whereas this ceiling is a cathedral ceiling so it might have a different R value. Uh, it might, it's, it's treated differently by manual J. So it is worth separating those from these down here. Okay. I'm not sure if we currently do that, but you will be able to uh, specify that location. In, in energy gauge, you do specify, you say attic or condition okay. in energy gauge. Yeah, and we'll get to that in just a second. So how are we doing the time? We are about halfway through, which is good. I don't think we're going to go the whole three hours tonight um, unless we just get a whole bunch of questions, um, which is perfectly okay. 
All right, so where are we? So we're in ceilings. We did, um, we did, we looked at windows, we looked at walls, uh, doors, if you have different kinds of doors, ceilings, uh, floors. Right now we defaulted, everything is slab on grade. Um, but let's say, you know, you had a different room that was a raised floor. You could, you could, you could pick that as a different floor type here if you wanted to, okay? I'm just gonna call everything slab on grade. So all these types, so like in room, you got room type in boxes, or sorry, in the windows, you got type name, walls, you got type name, doors, you got type name. All those types come from the libraries. So when you, let me go back real quick. I'm gonna go back to data. Let's go, we are in walls. So if I click on these wall types, you see these choices that pop up here? R13, R11, R13 plus four, knee wall, touching condition. You see these choices here? These types come from the libraries. And so if I go here and I go to walls, here's those choices that you saw in that pull down list, R13, R11, 13 plus four, and knee wall. So if I add to this list or if I modify this list, when you're in the data tab for walls, this drop down list will change and show all the choices you have in your library. Okay, that's where those come from. All right. Uh, let's see, ceilings, floors, ducts. Uh, we don't have any ducts yet. We'll get to that in a few minutes. And then roofs, if you if you want to specify a roof type, you can do that here as well. Okay. Let me go back to HVAC draw. There's something we need to do right now, early in the process before we do our load calcs. And that is we need to tell the software how many systems does this house have? And the way you tell it is by drawing systems, all right? And a system, we're going to define it as an air handler, okay? An air handler could be a furnace, it could be a fan coil unit. And so we've got this, we're up here, we're in equipment mode, we've got air handler, and I'm just gonna hit Alt and click, and you see it drew uh, a horizontal furnace, okay? So by drawing this one furnace, we've just told the software that this system has, or this house has one system. If I were to go control all place and put another one, now the software says, all right, this house has two systems. It doesn't matter where you put them. It doesn't matter what type they are. The fact that there are two of them tells the software that this house has two systems. And I'll show you where you see that. You go back to the data tab. And remember that very first table that I clicked on and there was nothing in there because we had not drawn any air handlers. Now I've drawn two air handlers and look, two systems, system block one, system block two. You can change these names. You can call it furnace one or, or system one or FAU one or whatever you want to call it, FAU one, and this one could be FAU two. Okay, and then those names will carry through everything. All right. Um, it's got a bunch of information here, which we don't need to tell it just yet. It'll actually calculate. I just want to show you that the simple fact that we've drawn in HVAC draw air handlers, that we've drawn two of these, it knows that this house has two systems. Well, this is a 600 square foot house. I think uh, two systems is probably excessive for that. So I'm going to delete that. All right, and um, since I know some of you are gonna ask, I'll go ahead and show you, but this is actually more for tomorrow's class. Uh, tomorrow's class, we're going to size the ducts and, and draw the ducts and draw the registers and size the ducts and the airflow and all that good stuff. Today is just doing load calculations and selecting our equipment, okay? Yes, see, I knew that question was gonna ask. Okay? All right, so someone's gonna say, well, can you do an upflow? Well, if you look down here, so we're on air handler in equipment mode, the air handler is highlighted by clicking on it. And by the way, um, X through a box always denotes supply and a single line through a box always denotes return, okay? So that's the return plenum and that's the supply plenum. This represents the furnace or air handler, and this 
blue represents the evaporator coil, the air conditioning coil, okay? So that's kind of the, the, the designation here. Now you can change these dimensions and you can also, as I was about to show you, down here, it says air handler type. So you have to click on it to highlight it. And here's those dimensions. You can change these dimensions and you can make it be an upflow unit like so, or a downflow unit like so. And all it did is it flipped the supply and return on the upflow and downflow. You'll also notice there's a little box down here that says move vertically. When that is checked, this green handle shows up here. Let's say this was a upflow unit in the garage. So now I've got it shown as an upflow unit, but it's not in the garage. I need to bring it down and set it on the ground. I'm gonna turn off the move vertical and I'm gonna drag it out here and there you go. Now it's an upflow unit in the garage. And you can see the supply plenum extends up into the garage, which is probably what we want. Okay, but you can change all these dimensions. Um, another question we get asked a lot is, can you model a ductless mini split? Well, a ductless mini split is ductless, so you're probably not gonna have to do manual D, but you can do load calculations. And you may wanna show that ductless mini split on the wall somewhere. So the way I typically draw ductless mini splits is I will make them an upflow unit. And um, you have to kind of play with it to see. Length is gonna be this dimension here. I'm gonna make the length be um, six. Oops, six. I'm gonna make the length of that be six. Length of that be six. And the length of that be six. Oops, okay. Okay. I like six. Okay, and now I'm gonna make all the widths of those be six inches wide. And that's still a little bit tall. Let me change these middle ones to one and one. And by the way, tab rotates. So hit the tab button, it rotates this around. And now I can take this little dude and I can move it to the height I want by the vertical move. I'm gonna put it in the living room. How about that? And I'm gonna turn off move vertical. I'm gonna drag it over here. I'm gonna put it on the wall in the living room. And you can, again, you can play with those dimensions, but that's, it's just, it doesn't really matter. It's just a visual representation. Hey Russ. So there's a little, yeah, Steve. Just, I know I hate to throw another wrench, but just a question. I know most houses are, you know, split systems, but what about when you come across one of the package unit? You do it to build it the same way and put it on top or, cause I know it, it, you know, how you do your duct work, it would be different than if you had a package unit to a split system. Yeah, so if you were doing a package unit, you would probably want to draw a roof just to, um, you know, kind of show where it's placed relative to the house. But let me go ahead and I'm gonna place another air handler up here. And I think a package unit would probably look better as a horizontal unit. And then I'm just gonna play with the dimensions a little bit. Um, let's make that length be 12. Oops. Here, here, here. I don't know. And, and there we go. So that looks a little bit more like a package unit. Okay, and you could you could um, move that up. I'll do move vertical, and I'll raise it up where I imagine that, that it probably actually sits on the house because there's gonna be a roof under here. You could draw the roof and put it on top of the roof if you wanted to. Okay, and um, so that's kind of how you would do. And again, you can change these dimensions, and you can only attach supply ducts to the supply plenum and return ducts to the return plenum. So when you draw your package unit or your mini split or whatever, you wanna keep that in mind because you're gonna attach ducts to this box and supply ducts are gonna attach to this that has the X through it and return ducts are gonna attach to this over here. So a typical um, rooftop package unit is gonna have all the ducts coming out the bottom. And so you'll draw those down there, okay? Yep, so you would just draw, just change your dimensions. Um, 
maybe make this be let's call it six. Six. Getting this style. Let's make it even less than that. Let's do one and so there's a there's a package unit, and you could attach your ducts on return ducts on this side, supply ducts on that side, however you want to do it. So you can play with those dimensions to get it to look like whatever you want it to look like. Yeah, the question I was saying was package has a supply and return team on the same side. Sorry for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, if you wanted to do that, just draw it, the, make the dimensions so that you've got part of your supply plenum and part of your return plenum on the same side of the unit, and then you can attach supply decks here and you can attach return decks over there. So it's just all how you how you change the dimensions of this air handler thing that, that's up there. Okay, all right, so let me delete that one. I'm gonna delete our little thing here. We're gonna make this one be a really small split system horizontal unit. So I'm just gonna place a, what's that? Kind of a little louder over there. Okay, so let's see. So all I've done basically is I put an air handler mainly for the sole purpose of telling the software that there's only one system. So now if I go to the data tab and I go to systems, there's only one here. So I'm gonna call that FAU1, okay? And if I go in and I look at the rooms, here's our rooms, kitchen, bed, living room, bed two, bath one. And look, it's assigned it to FAU1. There's only one in here. So it's giving them all the same FAU. Let me go back real quick and show you what happens if I were to place another one right there, and then I go to data systems. Now there's two called FAU1, FAU2. I did this before, but I forgot to take it a step further. Okay, so now there's two, two to choose from. And if I go to data rooms, they all say FAU1, but the ones that are in FAU2, I have to assign them. So let's say the living room and the kitchen are in FAU1, and then the bedrooms and the bathroom are on FAU2. So I just go kitchen, FAU1, living room, those are okay. Bedroom one, now look, there's a choice. FAU2, FAU2, FAU2. So now the rooms are assigned to different systems. So that's how you would do it for multiple systems, okay? Now, if I delete one of these, do these all go back automatically? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should. Okay, um, so we only have one system, so I'm gonna delete one. They should all go back, go back to data, rooms, oh yeah, and they all went back, because there's only one choice, so they all went back to FAU1, okay? Good enough. All right, so where are we in this process? Well, we drew our house, We, and if you, if you go right down your, your step-by-step -step instructions, it'll kind of do this. So we, let me just do that. We did our project tab. We did our libraries. We set our defaults in the libraries. Uh, we imported our floor plan. We scaled it. We drew our rooms on top of that floor plan. We created some vaulted ceilings. We grouped them. We put the windows on and we went ahead and added that, um, that garage, which is fine, okay? So basically at this point, our house is done. Um, except for the ducts, we haven't got to the ducts yet, but the house itself, we have enough information to start our load calculation, all right? 